So what's up guys, Thermionic Warrior here. So, for the last few months I have been working on a jukebox. I purchased two of these machines about, oh I don't know, about almost mid-winter pretty much. And I have decided I'm going to basically make one out of the two since they are in such bad shape that <laughs> that was the only economical thing to do. Anyways, so I'm just going to get into a bit of detail on tools and such you'll need if you decide to take on this sort of project where you're going to disassemble the whole mechanism and rebuild it. This is probably going to be a multi-part video since there's a lot to be explained and I kind of don't want to miss every detail. So to start off, this is I spent quite a number of hours putting this whole mechanism back together and cleaning each part. Like, it, it it can be a nightmare depending on the shape it's in, but it's well worth it. And this is the this is the clutch here, one of the more important pieces. And over here is another clutch from the other machine, and this is what it used to look like. You know, it, it still works, but you can feel a lot of resistance inside the, the the bearings, and that's the main thing. The only way you can actually get rid of that is if you fully clean the machine, each and every part. Because it's like a, it's almost like a cement that builds up inside. So this one moves pretty freely. And then I think the hardest piece to clean, hardest section to clean, is the is the tone arm. Because there's all these pieces. It's so intricate. Getting it back together is actually an absolute nightmare. So I wouldn't recommend it unless you know exactly what you're doing, or you have the manual on hand and have some patience. It, it requires a lot of patience. And I did replace the wire because it was all greasy and everything. So, just to, an example. This is what it used to look like. And this has, like, as you can see, I didn't have any of the wiring in it. The wiring is coming later. I have to rewire it. And you can see that it's just, it's just the munge that's caked on to every single mechanical part. The amount of resistance created, especially in the rollers. If you return them, you can feel there's not only are they a little bit there's a bit of resistance, but there there are inconsistencies in the rollers. Like this piece here is a good example of that. The um, then compared to this, this one which is all cleaned up and you can turn it, it you pretty much spins. So you know the motor's removed, got everything removed. The, the, the amount of grease that's in there, that, that it's not even grease anymore, it's like cement. You can't really clean it out. And even though this still works fairly well, it also looks very ugly and it's also smells really bad and it's not a really reliable thing because all, the only way you can continue to use this is to basically continue throwing on more grease because you can't really get rid of it <laughs> unless you clean it. So to do this, you will need to make a solution in a bin of some sort. In the end, I ended up ruining, I, I used a small clear container and I ended up ruining it because of the amount of grease. It was like a thick film of grease, but that much on the bottom of the bin after I was done cleaning. I, used, I just used dish soap and a bit of pine sole and water. Hot water is, is key too. And you know the end result are all these nice clean pieces. It takes a while to clean every individual one. Using a steel wire brush helps a lot. And it is important to, like these here you want to be careful because they can be, you have to check to make sure the rubber is still good. And then these ones are actually quite good still. And make sure you clean off the grease off those because that will break down the rubber faster. So these are the, the con, which contacts are these? Those are the, the timing relay contacts. Some of them are actually quite bad. And yeah, and th these are just the leftover parts. I even went down to taking apart each individual reed switch, which is quite crazy in its own way. But as long as you have the manual, you can pretty much figure it out. Anyways, since I'm running low on battery, I will come back to this later and I will get to explain putting this all together and pretty much calibrating and making sure that when it's making sure it, it'll it's all going to work properly. As you can see, I can actually turn this quite freely, which is a really good thing. <laughs> the other one, you can't really do it very well. 
and tools you'll need. You don't really need a lot, but there's some very key, other than the basic tools, there's some very important ones, like this is a dental tool, which is very useful for removing the little, the little lock washers, such as these ones here. Or you can use something like this, which has a point on it. But this tool is also very useful for putting springs back into place and scraping off, you know, excess grease in areas that you can't really get to. You'll need at least two different sizes of, um, of, what are they, the, the socket, the socket drivers. And you'll need, want some very fine tipped pliers and you'll want a metal bar that allow you to basically punch out these little pegs here and as well as help you put them back in place. And then an assortment of Allen keys. You might need a, a small screwdriver depending on the areas. Exacto blade helps depending on what, where you need it. But yeah, that, that, that's pretty much the basics. Oh yes, and a Phillips screwdriver since there are Phillips screws in here as well. But anyways, I will be back. This is part one and the second part I will begin reassembling this. Hope this was useful guys and stay tuned.